Federal law enforcement agencies have released an updated security bulletin outlining potential threats ahead of the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. One key line in that threat assessment reads, quote, the FBI and DHS remain concerned about the potential for follow-on or retaliatory acts of violence following last month's assassination attempt on former President Donald Trump. Protective measures, including additional fencing, are already up at Chicago's United Center, where Vice President Kamala Harris will formally accept her party's nomination for president. The convention begins August 19th. CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga joins me now. Uh, Nicole, welcome. So what type of threats are federal agencies looking out for ahead of the convention? Elaine, good to be with you. The threats range from criminal concerns like lone wolf attacks, both domestic and foreign born, to cyber attacks, to drone threats, all the way to human trafficking. Just one specific example, there's an entire team within the U.S. Secret Service dedicated to food defense and food surveillance, stationed where food preparation occurs behind the scenes inside the DNC. And there will be dozens of state and local law enforcement agencies on the ground to assist federal law enforcement for what's called a national special security event. That is the highest level of uh, security event that the U.S. government has. But in the wake of July 13th, the attempted assassination of the former president, there is particular focus on lone offenders. This bulletin goes out of its way to note that the gunman there had searched for information on the DNC before ultimately targeting that Pennsylvania campaign rally. Another key passage from the bulletin, we cannot rule out the possibility that some DVEs, domestic violent extremists or other threat actors, may attempt follow-on or retaliatory acts of violence in response to the assassination attempt. It also notes that historically domestic violent extremists have conducted or plotted attacks targeting perceived political or ideological opponents, and that certainly extends to political parties, Lane. And so what are these agencies doing now to identify any potential bad actors ahead of the convention? Yeah, there is a laundry list, literally pages long, of indicator, indicators that federal, state, and local law enforcement keep on their radar, for instance, possible indicators of pre-operational surveillance or attack planning. Among those, attempts to gain information about entry points to secure areas, discrete use of cameras, video recorders, or drones. Our viewers may recall that the gunman who fired at the former president on July 13th not only scoped out the rally area a week before the event, but used both a drone and a range finder in the hours leading up to Trump's appearance there. They'll also be looking, law enforcement, looking for any paramilitary training or tactics armor, shields, barricades, and, of course, weapons, purposeful distraction or diversion of law enforcement. Some of the early indicators for law enforcement stationed outside the White House ellipse and then Capitol on January 6th. Now, that is just a sample of what law enforcement's looking for, and Secret Service remains in charge of security within that perimeter outside. Chicago Police Department takes the lead. Thousands of protesters are expected to march outside that perimeter starting on August 19th. So ensuring those protests are peaceful, of course, another priority of law enforcement. It's a massive undertaking to keep all of that secure. Nicole, I also want to ask you about a report from Microsoft regarding Iranian efforts to influence U.S. elections. What can you tell us about that? A fascinating report that goes beyond what even U.S. intelligence officials have told journalists. Microsoft researchers identifying an apparent influence campaign, Iranian-linked, targeting the U.S. election in one very severe case, targeting a presidential campaign with an email phishing attack, though it does not say which one. One trend here, creating fake news sites, some with liberal or conservative slants, focusing on the Israel-Hamas war in addition to political candidates. Another example cited in this report a group run by Iran's Revolutionary Guard compromised the email account of a former advisor to a U.S. presidential campaign, then used that email to contact a senior official who was still engaged with the campaign that happened back in June, uh, impersonating activists online. We saw some evolved tactics in this report, digital manipulations, use of trusted logos or labels atop false information. One silver lining here in the report, Microsoft noted that while Iranian actors have experienced experimented with AI during their influence operations, those efforts have largely fallen flat, at least so far, Elaine. All right. Uh, Nicole Skanga for us. Nicole, thank you. Thank you.